Hi, my name is Vidushi. Welcome to Deeply Simple. Here we break down deep concepts around wellness and growth into simple and easier to understand habits. Today we are going to talk about digital distraction. Little bit. So, have you found yourself scrolling through YouTube, any kind of social media or even news channels and then saying to yourself, damn, the time got away from me. Well, breaking news. The time did not get away from you. You gave it away. You gave it away. The person on the other end of a social media video or a post or even a news channel is the same as a person you might be dining out with. So would you give your time of the day just to anybody who made a demand on it, who popped up at your house just like these windows pop up on our phone? Or would you want to exert some level of choice or control in whom you decided or whom you chose to spend your time with? I choose my food, I choose my clothes, I choose my friends. I wanted to start choosing my digital content. I wanted to be in control of what I wanted to see versus this world of digital media running my life. Additionally, I want these digital resources to benefit my growth and learning. As human beings, we are extremely curious. You might think that a child is curious, but as we grow up, we lose that curiosity, but science would differ. Science thinks that we are neotenic, which means that we carry a lot of childlike characteristics even when we grow up, and one of them is curiosity about the world. What I think really ends up happening is that we get overburdened by digital distraction so that we don't really leave out space to consciously make decisions and satiate our curiosity. So I sat down and I asked myself what I wanted to know about the world. That led me to three questions that I want to continue answering in my life. I would like to share with you the three questions and the resources, some of the resources that I use almost on a daily basis that align with those questions. Radhanath Swami is a Vedic monk. He talks about leading our lives intentionally and the fundamentals of how we can show up as valuable human beings to the society. Even though he follows a specific religious tradition, his talks are actually pretty secular and that's what I like about the conversations that he has on YouTube. I, I, I often think of him as my spiritual teacher and one of the best starts to my weekends is starting them with a cup of coffee and Radhanath Swami. Robin Sharma is eccentric. He is a lawyer who turned into an author. You might know him from The Monk Who Sold His Ferrari or the more recent 5AM Club. He uses profuse words, but if you're able to look past that, he actually has a lot of good content and a lot of practical content. He wants people to break the limitations that they put on themselves. He wants people to excel, to be productive, and to become the masters of their own life. I find his content really, really authentic and in bite-sized pieces, I've tried to apply some of the tips and tactics into my own life. Love, Happiness and Success Podcast. This is run by a therapist, Dr. Lisa Marie Bobby. I was astounded at the content that's out there. It's all free and she really helps people answer some practical questions that we all deal with in our lives. How do I fight the blues? How do I fight anxiety? How do I use my voice constructively at work? How do I ask for what I deserve? How do I manage my anger? How do I manage my time? I'm sure that you resonate with some or all of these. But this is a podcast that you need to kind of sit down with a pen and paper, take notes and then consciously apply what you learn. So you get from the podcast what you put into it. Finally, how to save a planet. This has to be my favorite podcast of all times by Dr. Ayana Elizabeth Johnson. She is a scientist and a journalist Alex Bloomberg. I started out on my journey in understanding climate change, but I was overwhelmed. There was too much content out there and everything was so interdependent. I wanted somebody to help me start breaking it down piecemeal and that's where the podcast steps in. It's extremely current. It talks about the current politics and the current dynamics of the world that impact policies and decisions that are made around climate change. It is also extremely humorous. Their conversations are very funny and very engaging. 
I believe in this podcast so much that I actually think it should be an essential part of education curriculum across schools and colleges if the country could agree that there is climate change. Um, so I hope these resources were helpful to you. I do want to say that I'm not perfect. There are days when I basically take to social media scrolling, mindless social media scrolling, but I've always noticed that after spending my time in doing that, I always walk away feeling more drained than invigorated. So I actually just choose to uh, focus on the fact that I'm trying to choose the content that I want to invest in, content that uplifts me, that makes me more productive, that helps me learn, and that helps me show up as a better human being in this world. If you like this video, I would encourage you to check out some other videos. It would mean a lot if you subscribed, shared and liked this video because it helps people reach uh, this content. And I am going to continue making some other videos on wellness. I will see you in one of those. Mm -hmm.